Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the sixth edition of the Blue Table Talk. Brought to you by your favorite bank, Standard Bank. Uh, my name is Pilar Damini, but my friends call me PhD, and for the purposes of this evening, we'll take it at PhD. Uh, we, we are speaking all things cybersecurity awareness this month. It's the month of November, and it's a National Cybersecurity Awareness Month. We are live on Facebook, we're live on YouTube, and we're live on Twitter. We are in the cyberspace. I'm in the studio tonight with SMEs or subject matter experts. Banfila Batigong is cybersecurity in the kingdom of Eswatini. And at this point, I would just love to introduce them to you, or rather let them introduce themselves. Uh, we have a rose amongst some thorns here. And I'm going to start with the rose at the tool. And then I'm going to pick which thorn I start with. And then we get right into it. Over to the rose. Um, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I am Nuktula Lope. I work for Eswatini Communications Commission as the IT engineer, and I am part of a team that is responsible for running with national cybersecurity awareness initiatives. Thank you. Thank you, and welcome, Nuktula. Um, I will start with the gentleman on my far end, Naya Detful. The Lestonia one. <laughs> <laughs> um, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Andile Masego um, is my name. Um, currently working with MTN Eswatini, where um, I'm part of a team as well, which looks after information security. Um, pleasure to, to be here today. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome, Andy, and thank you for joining us. And then last but not least, uh, may I please have our last guest introduce himself. Um, good evening, um, everyone. Good evening, PhD and um, guests. I work for Standard Bank, Eswatini. Um, I'm part of a team that is responsible for management of um, protection of the bank's information and systems. Thank you. Welcome. Um, welcome, guys, and thank you for joining us. Thank you for taking the time to be with us uh, this evening. Viewers at home, as you've heard, we have experts here from the regulatory body. We have experts from the mobile telephone company, and we also have experts from the bank. And uh, this evening, if you have any questions, comments, or queries or concerns, please post them online. May I please encourage you to ask all the difficult questions uh, so that we can have you know, all the juices coming out of our experts and, and give you some of the responses if time permits. Uh, but we'll get right into it and I'll start with uh, the rose. Uh, so November is Cyber Security Awareness Month in Eswatini and we'd love to hear what it's all about and if there are any activities that, that have been happening throughout the month and, and why those activities in, in particular even. Um, okay, thanks Pilar. Uh, so November is our National Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Um, I know a lot of people are wondering why we have um, November as the Awareness Month, but um, Eswatini is unique. So obviously we had to choose something different and we chose November. So um, we've been running this since um, I think this is the fourth year we've been doing this. And um, I'm happy to say that it is picking up. Um, we have a lot of people talking about cybersecurity during the month of November. Um, but it is not really, I wouldn't say we should just leave it to the November. Um, it's a continuous thing. So um, this year, our theme is um, a safe cyberspace for everyone. Um, we just want to encourage everybody to um, be responsible as they use social media or as they use digital platforms. And then we also want to capacitate them so that they know how to respond if there is a cyber threat or if they think they are being you know, um, hacked or something. So um, that is what we're all about. So what we normally do is we, um, we have target groups. So, um, and we based this year's uh, theme on a report that we got from um, uh, Royal Eswatini Police. Um, so where they listed the common cyber crimes in the country. Um, one interesting one, which, is, I, which I didn't think was a problem in the country, is cyberbullying. So we looked at cyberbullying and we, you know, we were like, no, we need to go and talk to the kids. So we are going around the country, visiting schools, talking to them about acting responsibly as they use social media. And then our vulnerable groups, uh, which are Bomagebetu, Bokokobetu, Laseba, Kulile. We've had a lot of issues, a lot of incidents um, being reported. Emobile Mani, Velebayanok, it's happening. Um, so most of them don't even know what to do. Um, 
Labanye Vele fall victim. So um, we've partnered with MTN, uh, thank you MTN, um, Eswatini Mobile, and the DPM's office. Sihamba nabo siye emakaya etingunle ni siba funzi sebo koko nabo mkulu about uh, what to do as they use lama cell phones nabo mobile um, wallets. And then logo unye is um, we cannot leave professionals out of it. So we've introduced uh, a course. Um, it's a free course um, that you can enroll in. If you want to know more about uh, cybersecurity, um, please go on to the ESCOM website. You will find more details. Or on my social pages, you will get more detail regarding that uh, course. It's free of charge, and you are going to get a certificate. Now, it gets, it's a Cisco course, so I go to Ranong Noktula. So <laughs> at least it will count for something. Um, so there are quite a number of activities. Um, um, but uh, the highlight of this month is we were able to launch a national cybersecurity strategy uh, that we've been waiting for for quite a while, um, which actually gives us direction as a country on what to do um, and the roles all of us have to play to ensure that um, we... Wow, interesting. That's quite a lot. Eh? It's, quite, it's quite a lot. And speaking of bullying and speaking about Bamla Batsala, you know, also getting, you know, I know for a fact that this year we had an act that was enacted into law. And, uh, of course, the newspapers reported about it and there was an entire, you know, response because I think the focus was mostly on social media and social, um, social media on the website. And I'm pretty sure people are saying, ah, as Fungwe, and there's a law that we're not reading, but we are governed by that law. So what is the scope of the law? Is it just social media? No, uh, Pilar. The scope of um, the act is quite wide, and I would encourage everyone to um, actually read because involvement um, is Asia. So, for instance, um, there are issues around um, illegal interception of data. That's not social media per se, but it is a crime. Gunema issues a good see I've logged onto someone's computer illegally. Not on so yes, it is a crime. Um, and then the other issue, which, um, well, as I was preparing for this and uh, that I actually noticed, um, is sending uh, pornographic uh, pictures and stuff to people. Um, it is a crime if that person hasn't given you consent. So, in Bobo Nage, Kaya, Snga Sendela, Ninje, Nginga Gavumi, Funas Vumela, Ne, Kutisiya Sendela, Nangoba Uta Ukanza Uboshiwe. So, there are quite a lot of offenses um, on the act. And I would encourage everyone, Anga Noti Kanza Sega Boshiwe Lite. They say what? Ignorance of, of the law, yeah, is not an excuse. So, please um, read the act. Manning um, Ilama offenses, and they are very clear. Um, some will shock you, but yes. And um, the fines are quite hefty, from 100,000 imprisonment, yeah, two mil I mean, yeah, two years. And then the highest, I think, a fine is a, as a million. So, Nkela Nibo Funza, Singa Tikanzi Sesi Boshe, Ses Boshi. Wow, and I think, you know, uh, if there's one act that we should read, I'm not saying the others are not important, <laughs> but, look, but looking at how, you know, we live our lives these days, we're on social media, we're on our phones and our gadgets, all 24-7 really. I mean, even for work purposes, we're on these um, uh, gadgets and we are breaching so many of these, I'm pretty sure. Some of us are in WhatsApp groups where you open something and you are shocked and you haven't given consent, you know, so now I can actually go to the cops and say, hey, auntie, let sent this to the group, and, and the entire group can open a case against you, I'm pretty sure, you know. Um, well, and that's, one, that's just one implication, deeper. but there's other implications of uh, weak, you know, cybersecurity sort of systems and, and programs. I think from a financial perspective, but also from a data perspective, there's many implications, and I, I, I wonder, deeper from, from you, whether you think as a country we are well equipped equipped for cybersecurity issues? Well, if we speak well equipped, I'd say we're chasing a, a moving target. Um, I can confirm, Gutsi, since we had a, a regulator, we've seen, we've seen quite a lot of, of, of shift um, to the positive. We're talking about these, these pieces of legislations um, they have been put, they talk to different people, as, as people, individuals, but it could have place a responsibility on us as, as corporate entities. Um, one of them that came into, into, into law 
um, is, it speaks data protection and the responsibility that other entities have to protect it data in a customer A2, use it responsibly for what for what we are using it for, etc., etc., and it also places certain responsibility of um, notifying the regulator of these things, because if you are talking about e readiness to to okay from a cyber security space, if you are talking about um, are we well equipped? You are talking about a lot of things. There is the legislative part and regulation. But also if you look at um, cyber security or cyber crime, some of it is not just targeted to individuals or organizations. Some of it is, is, is targeted um, at states. And if you are targeting a state, you can target directly the government um, entities, but that would not necessarily be their be the route you'll find would see some one of the other routes is to direct um, attacks at strategic industries banking in any country is one of the strategic industries telecommunications it's a, it's a strategic industry there are also other assets of or, or those that are listed or, or, or are, are taken as um, key strategic um, key points in, in 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 any card it would be an airport it could be infrastructure, a book, a and that. So at those levels, um, there are those types of, of attacks, and it, it then calls for a coordinated response and capacity um, that is coordinated centrally, but also at an industry level. And then within organizations, there is also tactical level response um, that should happen. And then also at an individual level, there, 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 there is also that, that, that requirement you would see you could see city QP. So at different these different levels, there is something that we need to do, and we are seeing that there has been a shift from a legislative uh, point of view. Within organizations in our small pockets, there are activities that we do at Standard Bank for, to equip our staff, as well as to protect the systems. I'm sure um, other organizations, um, MTN and, 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 and them, are also doing the same. But is it, do we then get to, to a space where we are then coordinated to actually assist each other and also to, to share intelligence, um, threat intelligence. Wherein you find an organization in, in, in Eswatini um, experiences a, 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 a cyber breach, that organization be experienced some three years ago. That speaks to us not having shared sufficiently um, what happened to me and how, without, without divulging Emma, 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 Emma secrets and internal um, classified information of organizations, what happened to our organization, um, what the modus operandi was, these were the attack vectors, and this is how we responded. So um, there, is, there is a lot. But also as individuals, before I, I work for Standard Bank, I am an individual. My, my protection of myself and my, and my gadgets may have an impact on Standard Bank especially now since now we work from home and that the, the, the terrain is, 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 is quite different. It requires us to be nimble in terms of how, of how we approach the whole subject matter. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that is very, that's a mouthful. That's very interesting. I mean, I think what you're bringing out is the importance of the coordination and you know, all of us working together. As you're saying, the state is not just government. It's, it's, it's also all the other uh, key areas of state, including businesses and, and uh, you know, other areas like the banks. And all of that. I think Lenguva ga shenga we gopa ngutinza ba itu song. You know, we be sagi me as as an individual because even in these entities, it's individuals that are working there. In government, it's people that are working there. So if those people lose sight of you know just awareness in in the cyberspace, then gan jalo nje say feel and a threat comes in, and all of us you know are in trouble because a lot is at stake, you know, pretty much. And I think with all that we've said so far. Um, maybe it's time we take a breather so everybody can think about this. Now, and as far as cybersecurity awareness is concerned, where are you? What are the things that are loopholes within your space? And what are the, what are the breaches that could happen because we're not so likely to uh, somehow? So we're going to have an ad break and we're going we're to come back shortly. I know better than anyone the difficulty of running your own business. To have a client that has a demand for a product and you know just where to get it and for a good price, somewhere overseas maybe. And the most difficult part about that being having all the money to pay for the product before you can get paid for it by your client. But you already know all of that. But did you know 
that with Standard Bank's trade finance solutions, you don't have to worry about that aspect of running your business. Because all the Forex risk, the working capital finance you need, letters of credit or guarantees are covered by a partner you can trust, making it easy for you to do what you're good at. Finding new ways to grow your business. End-to-end -end import solutions for your business? Not without trade finance solutions. Standard Bank. It can be. Welcome back. Welcome back uh, to the Blue Table Talk. It is the sixth edition brought to you by your favorite bank, Standard Bank of SOID. I always chuckle when I speak about Standard Bank because I do believe this is the best financial institution in the country. Welcome back and thank you for joining us. It's the month of November. It's Cybersecurity Awareness Month in the Kingdom of Eswatini, and we are speaking all things cybersecurity. If you've just joined us, you've missed out, but we still have more for you, so you will learn even more from our panel of experts here as we speak about your responsibility as an individual in as far as cybersecurity is concerned. Andy, I'm going to bring you into the conversation, and we're going to speak business now. You know, and um, uh, Deepo and Noctula have said a lot from regulation point of view, People have spoken about the state, you know, and the critical areas around the state as well. But now for companies specifically, why is it important for a business to have sound cybersecurity systems or programs even? All right. Um, I think from my opinion, um, we come from a lot of organizations where we used to have what we call core functions, right? Uh, more people will think this is a core function of a business if we're manufacturing appreciation of. So I think it's... Information security professionals have a long way to catch up to, to the business and all of the investments that have been made, you know, we're moving from a, we're coming from a point where you, you can't even secure budget for, for, for security as a department because people don't recognize that as a, as a formal um, department or a division where uh, you can't justify an investment of 15 million a year. So, so I think having a cyber security program um, is one way to actually try start selling value to the business in terms of what information security brings to the table. I think so many times we we start having um, we 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 actually look at information security as policemen in the organization, <laughs> which shouldn't be the case, because I th I think we should be selling value in the sense that. Um, what our presence actually does in terms of benefiting the business and talking in that language that will benefit the business. So I think you need to have a sound cybersecurity um, program that will help you achieve that. I think it also touches on some of the strateg strategic intents, um, initiatives, whatever you want to achieve. And I think it gives you an opportunity, for instance, if you're looking at your security posture in the organization, you will have specific gaps which are technical, you will have specific gaps which are maybe culture related, you know, so it, 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 it zooms in on those different elements and allows you to, to apply something which will not only be technical controls, but sometimes you need to lobby for, for, for certain um, th things that you want to, to, to achieve from your ex core, from, from different stakeholders within the business. So I think it gives you the opportunity to, to look at that in a bigger picture. Thank you. You know, yeah. um, I'm just going to, on your behalf, uh, send a message to all the ex cores and CFOs out there and say, uh, bottom line is good, uh, but maybe I'll use a, a whole term and say, uh, cyber security is gooder. So <laughs> let's, let's put in the money there uh, because we've, we've got a lot to gain, you know? A, a lot is at stake. I, I can only imagine what companies could lose if, if they have, you know, a breach in security in the cyberspace. I mean, I think we've seen some examples even in the international space. So thank you very much for being us in. I'm going to bring people back into the conversation. I mean, earlier you spoke about the state, and I know you're not a statesman. So I want to bring it back into your industry. You know, banking has evolved over the years, man. Kind of the days where you came into a bank, saw somebody, now with Roy Mali, Agnigel Pugla Kusai, Agnigel Cash, what was in your hand? Nice old dealing, and deal. You know, now we're transacting online. You know, we've got mobile banking. We're transacting on EFT, which is online. Um, we have platforms like Unayo, our favorite platform, you know. And um, I'm just wondering, as, as a customer, as a, as, as a consumer, as a user of all of these technologies and all of that, what should I know about security in all of these? Should I even trust them, you know? There is a lot of investment that is being placed um, technically to to protect those platforms and it's an evolving um, investment because 
every every day we every day and every now and then um we are assessing um, um we are assessing um, 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 loopholes potential loopholes that are there in these platforms so should you trust them i'd say yes because we are conducting business in a responsible manner um earlier on ngulume nge data protection act with every piece of data that I have, including your transaction, there is a responsibility that I that I have. And if I lose a layer of data, Noctula comes comes to us and 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 actually may impose fines. So we we have responsibility. We have the responsibility of ensuring that your data and your transactions and your transacting on the platforms is as safe as it as as, as we possibly can have it to be. However, a lot of responsibility. It falls on you when, as 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 a, as a customer that uses these platforms, and the principles are the same. Na kesho akolo physical, umanga be una e endline, au mzazi njumbege umshie ethical tafu lekishi ni nduhambe uyolala. You will definitely take it back to your bedroom. We hide the pasa matras or la balaba ne ma safe bamfage ma safe. The principle is the same. It's just that what has changed, Guti. Are you transacting with a physical cash, normal or cash? Ula I'll, 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 I'll highlight a, a few things, and, and it's simple hygiene. Lutsing is where you, you, you bank. Una USSD, star 120 hash, una pin. Lutsing olako, luna pin. Always make sure you you lock Lutsing olako. Of course, I know Uzi, it, 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 it raises certain <laughs> debates on whether me and my spouse should share phones. Yeah. Uh, my phone, my spouse wants 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 twenty four access to phones. The, well, that is your decision, but generally, what 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 you advocate for is lock your phone, whether with a pin. But good no no no, we biometric. Um, good love must be smartphones. But also the pin loy seventy sa go unlock a little thing unlock the screen. It should not be the same as the pin loy seventy sa go go unlock your 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 star one twenty hash because go star one twenty hash so no access to email. Now. If if somebody knows that pin, from your side, basically it means that person has access to all your money. And on these platforms, due to customer requirements, lama amounts that they can withdraw and send to other people. Same same money. So lama lama financial losses are actually significant for an individual. It's the same thing about internet banking. Internet banking, we kung ato nga unga fama ko isabendi sa device yako. No matter device kelo you trust that okay, nanga be old day when I go, but uben mlo yetsem ba ko. Long ay customize ako to X7 day le when. Le 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 address ya 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 e banking dot standard bank dot co dot z. The type hele, no matter who you bookmark. Unga ati u u u email from Noctula ati na ay access ya ako to 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 your internet banking because in aktata in migi segule nye e site. Let out kisha i i fan enale platform yalelo pangela ko yalo standard bank there is a lot of that that is happening and good investment lengulu from ma cyber criminals um to try and, and and get access to your monies it's the same principles lalapho utsenga khona online try to buy kuma reputable um online stores uma ngabe itele reputation leo online stores please know ukuthi lokho lokwendako the transaction yakho and now figure a so so a problem like subsequent to that segment of my transactions the bank cannot help you because Ali be now pella now now gain a good less or stolen um depot depot online shop. I see now protected sometimes it ever protected from so banal way sign going can and can it ever protected to fagal up emma 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 details el cardilac. Yin lama teachers that singa will card now in the level online banking. It's the full card number. It's the CCV, and that's it. Whomsoever long ali, all that they need is just those two, and they will perform transactions. Ungeko utawakanza endiwe transaction less endiwe Ukraine, endiwe Russia, endiwe Iraq and stuff. And just on a parting note on that, on the um, Ukraine Russia issue. Um, war, there have been a lot of transactions that are happening in 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 in, in East um, Europe, because 
waging of states waging war against each other they not only invest in the physical artillery they, 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 they the war now is waged from all fronts including including the online and war has to be funded so you have a responsibility in cause look to mola ko albe ngimahla le queen that's why babu mahla le queen alihlale phela la kikiri li ahambi likichi mayo ngendzawo if you are talking about mobile money not to us talking about mobile money earlier boko kona bomkhulu they are very vulnerable because ngithi nebantu abethu La 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 basita ni alovo koko, especially because Emashe um, have been done away with uh, uh, in Switzerland. Minenge ukhaike maguam every now and again. Fanya kuzi nchini mfunzi zoya sasa utanzeta kanje. It's it's those type of things, but the whole purpose is be responsible for your own transacting and know kuzi kutaipe mine lap. Unga sebendi sema links lo 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 tawa tola from anyone. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for all of those warnings. Eh? <laughs> so you shouldn't worry about that. Um, what I'm getting here is that the bank is, is accountable to the regulator and the bank upholds that. The bank also is accountable to its own clients, you know, for trust purposes, because you, you don't want to lose people's money because of your own negligence as the bank. But now the biggest thing I'm getting is that I as a consumer, I as a person that is actually a customer of the bank, and is using all of these platforms has a bigger responsibility to ensure Gutsi, I like Nagim. You know, everything I do, my codes, my pins, everything is safe and secure. And I'm using trustworthy sites to buy online and all of that. Thank you for the especially going to the festive season, eh? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> Black Friday. And, and, and so <laughs> the facilitator for all of this, Andil you know, is our mobile telephone operators. You know, this, this, all of this uh, online things we're doing, we're doing it because we have the internet. You know, we have uh, you guys as, as our service providers and we, we want to think our data is going through you, you know, somehow. You are part of the chain, you know. Um, how secure is the network? How do we know that our data is not compromised as we use all of these networks and that nobody will just come in, you know, at the center of all of this? Uh, I might have done right, you know, maybe I'm using a bank app and the bank is accountable to the regulator and, and their system is also not, not, you know, compromised in any way. But using the network, uh, how secure is that? I'm t I'll tell you one thing. Um, no person working in security wants to be asked that question. Because um, <laughs> I could literally say um, we, we're fully secure right now and I'd walk out this building and... Um, uh, something online could be going saying we have MTN's data. You know, that's kind of the world that we're living in. Um, I think we've seen so many even bigger corporates than your Uber, your, your SolarWinds, big, big corporates that, are, mm -hmm. that have been infiltrated. Um, so I think um, maybe for, f I, I think the security risk has a maturity and our approach to it as mobile operators, I think is definitely improving. I think Depot touched on the, the regulator space, which has greatly contributed. And I think um, with the fact that looking at our market in Eswatini, for instance, I think we're getting there slowly but surely. Um, but it's still worrying to see some companies which do not have a presence for, for someone looking at information security. It sort of makes you feel like maybe we're going backwards, we're not moving at the, at the speed you want to see. But I think we're, we're getting there. And I think one thing that um, we need to be cognizant of is um, in, for mobile operators where we sort of sit at the foundation or base of, of most things, we have a lot of partners. For instance, we, we, we allow you to use your, some of the USSDs, Sunland Bank own, FNB own, you know. So our security um, is also their security and their security is our security. So if Senate Bank maybe is affected one way or the other, um, we might be affected by that as well. So just going back to, to how difficult it is to answer that question, um, with giving guarantees of some sort, but I think the way maybe, and the outlook and, and, and how we are approaching security um, as mobile operators and as MTN Swatin, I think we're doing a lot of investments um, to, to, to try and work at that. Um, yeah, I think if you look at maybe five years back and where we are today, um, there's a lot. There's a lot. I'd, I'd count so many things. Um, people would think I'm, I'm advertising MTN. But, but I think we, we are doing quite a lot in that space. Um, I think if I do say so myself, we're, 
one of the leaders in the market with regards to information security and, and ensuring that we we strengthen the network and make sure that it's impenetrable. But as, as I'm saying, um, it has to. We have to work together on this. We MTN cannot shine alone. So Tin Mobile cannot do that alone. Standard Bank cannot do that alone. Um, so we have to ensure that, to the point that we have to be strict about who we integrate with as MTN. We need to to be thoroughly convinced that whoever we're integrating with is not going to be the, the loophole because there's a lot at stake. There's a lot of stake. Data, um, just the operations of the network. If you, you have one of our systems or where everybody connects to go down for 10 minutes, it's definitely felt by the entire country. So it's, it's those things. You find that um, some transactions can't go through, people can't bank. Um, it, there's just a lot that um, is relying on, on, on us to, to really up our game. So absolutely. You're going yeah. back to what we've been saying, that collaboration is the new competition. You know, nobody's a standalone now. There's so many possible entryways for an attack that could affect everyone. So MTN alone strengthening their system is not enough. Everyone else is in the value chain should also strengthen their system. I'm going to go back to uh, Noctula here. And there's a question from the audience that I want to bring to you, but it's, um, it's similar to what we've been speaking about, you know, all along. And we have a viewer that says, what measures... Um, are you doing to regulate data protection of organizations regarding cloud computing? There's a lot of cloud being spoken about, and this person must be an expert because they're saying, for example, most company emails are hosted on M365, which is Microsoft 365, yet we don't know where the data center is located. Um, okay, it's a, it's, a, it's a pretty difficult one because um, the act actually came into law um, this year. Um, so we... We are setting up the office, um, so I think uh, December 1, um, you'll start hearing more about data protection. Um, so there is a lot, um, and I would encourage companies and businesses to start reading the Act in preparation for what is going to come. So we are still at, um, you know, uh, setting up um, and, and making sure that the structures that need to be there are there and ensuring that we are going to be able to regulate. And at the same time, we have to give um, time for businesses to actually um, comply to acts like that. So there'll be a lot of consultations and we'll be talking to everyone, businesses, um, or data um, processors, we will be talking to them and, you know, so there will be back and forth um, yeah, and a lot of meetings. So please stay tuned and watch that space. We are going to start um, regulating that. Absolutely. And as Angela was saying earlier, you know, it's, o it's always a work in progress in this space. Uh, you know, your, your security yesterday, yesterday might not be good enough today. So we're constantly working and constantly iterating and finding solutions. So I know for a fact um, that what you're saying will be on the lookout uh, because I'm, I'm gaining so much interest now in cybersecurity. And I hope the viewers at home as well, I hope you are getting interest as well because there's a lot that is at stake even for us as individuals, eh? There's a lot at stake here. I'll bring you back, Noctula, to social media. You know, bringing back to social media because that's where that's that's where we we live now. You know, school I mean, right now we are beaming this live on social media, and I, I'd love to just know the exposures we have. You know, as as consumers and as users of social media, in as far as you know, security is concerned, as we interact and as we use all of these platforms, you know, what should we know about security while using them? use these platforms, I would encourage everybody. Um, it's something that we never pay attention to. Mangati says it's a fine print. fine print. But um, please go to your preferences, your security preferences. Make sure you enable two-factor authentication. Um, so I'll give you an example. During our launch, um, we had a demonstration and then somebody hacked my Facebook account and it was like there on screen with my password because I hadn't enabled a two-factor authentication. So if somebody can easily do that, and he sent me an email, it was a phishing email, I just clicked on that thing. And then it popped up and now let's say I should log on. And it looked like Facebook, it looked like a Facebook authentic um, logon. And I logged on, captured my um, password there and there. So it is that easy. So you need to go to the settings. People think security is this complicated thing. But there is a regulation um, that all these um, 
platforms adhere to, yeah, I say Europe, where they've tried to make it easy and the language easy for me and you to understand so that uh, Ubuntu factor authentication but there is usually an explanation of what it is um, there is usually an explanation of what each setting is all about so please um, check my settings Arco, because that's your responsibility um, there's so much that Facebook can do to make it itself secure now where you have a role to play so really on social media we have a huge role to play in ensuring that security is on point. Thank you. If you don't know what two-factor authentication is, go online <laughs> where you live, <laughs> Google that thing, find out what it is, and then implement it. It's life-saving because there's so much going on in our social media platforms. We're speaking to so many people, we're doing so many things, and, and we don't want that to go live for everyone to see. I know you know what I'm talking about. So let's get there. But also, we don't want our important and private data to go out to people. We don't want to lose. Some of us shop using some of these social media platforms. Some of you have your card information because maybe you're advertising your businesses on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. So if anybody has access to that, they have access to that information. So be cyber smart you know, and think about that. And thank you for, um, thank you for, the, for the encouragement and for the, for the, for the, for the ideas. Um, Noctula. I'm going to bring Andy Lynn Depot back. Um, Cybersecurity is obviously important. I mean, you were just saying, Andy Lynn, now that companies are investing more and more into that. And you were saying for those companies that don't have cybersecurity people or analysts or a department of cybersecurity, maybe it's time they invest in that. And chance, chances are business people are watching here this evening and they'll be investing in that because they'll get more insights from this show and possibly from uh, research as well. So Am I right to say it's a critical skill in the future? I think so. I think it's a critical skill in the future. And there's young people watching us today who are hearing this for the first time and saying, what is cybersecurity? And what are the different careers in cybersecurity? And if there are, are there any learning opportunities that exist at this point you know, around cybersecurity that you know about as experts or that you can even give as ideas to young people on where to study, what to study? Uh, I, think, th I think they already know the why you know, at this point. Um, I'll start with you, Deepo. Um, thanks for bringing that up. Um, I think you recall when I was doing the intro, I spoke about developing now yeah. of, 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 of people. One, um, if you look at the growing technology-based um, industries, cybersecurity ranks in the top three. I think in, 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 in one, I, I, forget, I forget the source, but it lists um, Internet of Things, artificial intelligence than cybersecurity in a list of 14. I think at number 14 there was e-learning, which was an interesting um, 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 uh, aspect. And, and I agree with it because learning has gone online. Um, more le most learning um, is going online and has gone online, um, especially for our parts of, of, of the world. Maybe the first world has, always, has been there for, for, for quite some time. So. Then, then two, there is a reality um, that says in a study of of uh, the Rust squared, they're actually um, confirming that globally, including the first world, there is scarcity of skills, um, including governance, risk and control, including risk risk assessments and management, um, threat intelligence analysis, and that there are so many areas um, that are there um, as part of subsets of cybersecurity skills and areas. The blocker, there are two general blockers, and the, 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 the one that I'll talk about is the expense or cost of, 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 of training. Um, it, is, it is quite, quite hefty. Um, you need to be deliberate, firstly as an individual, to try and invest in yourself. And I am seeing quite a number of people um, that are doing this or that training in, 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 in cybersecurity. And quite a number of them are, are, are reaching out. They, we've become a little bit known in terms of us being in, in the, and that is a role at a personal level that I'm trying to play, um, that, that of advocates and, and, and developing an industry or a profession. But the other thing, um, probably someone may ask a question, if, if there is so much scarcity, where are the jobs, where are the, where are the adverts? 
where the adverts for 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 the, for, for the jobs of um, to enter into this into this industry. It then talks to what Andy Lee was talking about. Um, if if we speak Standard Bank, um, Eswatin, am I satisfied of the number of resources that 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 I that I have, um, and do I believe that? I could do more, or we could do more with 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 increased capacity in terms of bodies, definitely. But there 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 are governance and and whatever issues that that and and limitations that organisations and purely so limitations that organisations will have. But we've seen a shift. If you look at organisations five years ago, um, there were just a few organisations that had information security or cyber security or something types of of of, of resources. Today you can you can count. And I believe that it is growing. And from an advocacy point of view, organizations, I, I would encourage organizations to invest in, 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 this, in these offices. One organization had a, a, a breach, and then two months down the line, it was advertising a post, yeah, 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 um, information security management. Uh, manage. I'm not saying you have, to be, you, you have to have a breach before you, 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 you build the capacity, um, internal capacity. Um, our approach generally of all cybersecurity practitioners, it, it is either you have been hacked and you know about it, or, oh, sorry, it is, it, is either, it is either you have been hacked and you don't know about it, or you have been hacked. And, and, and it is not a matter of, of, of if, it's a matter of when. And it's a matter of... Um, do you become aware and, 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 and respond? Because one of the main things, and it's a challenge for cybersecurity uh, uh, practitioners, but have a moment of la lens where there is no activity, and you, all, you have to keep on building and keep on building and justifying the value to business. And so business may ask you, why do we invest in you until you have an incident and you have to respond? And in those moments, you need to be preparing, Gutsi. Should I be attacked or should, should there be a breach? How will I respond? And that de determines how you bring back your services back and exist as a, as a business. It's like the fire and emergency services. <laughs> there's no fire for 10 years and we're paying people and then there's a big fire yeah. and you realize that you need them. Angela, would you love to add anything on the skills development uh, piece? Yeah, I think um, we had a very interesting conversation with people which was a couple of months ago, um, regarding recruitment for information security people within the country. It, it was interesting to see that the same challenges we're facing, for instance, at MTA, and are the same challenges they're facing in a different environment elsewhere and, and, and all of that. Mainly because I, I don't think we, we have done enough, or maybe I think we're still starting out, but I think we just need to do a lot more in terms of exposing um, a lot of our young generations to towards cybersecurity or information security um, as, as the bigger picture is and and because I think um, how I got into cyber in information security um, was not intentional um, I think through the different exposures within the different organizations I've worked at um, I, I felt like this is what I wanted to do um, and I decided to stick with that um, even though maybe there were possible opportunities to move out but I decided this is what I want to do because of how intriguing it is and how you know engaging it is and I always owe that exposure back to to, to one of the organizations I've worked for and I feel like it's it's something that we have to be intentional about um, for instance I think organizations we could go back to universities and and do something and do something where we, we target a certain number of individuals that will exposed to what information security is, even if it's a month, even if it's a week long something, even if it's a, well, however long it is, or it doesn't have to be something big, because, you know, corporates, we like to then go into our boardrooms and we plan for a year, <laughs> and then we don't do anything about it. But it, it's, it's, it's just that I think we, we can definitely do, do a lot better in terms of exposing, because what, what we do maybe is not an exact image of what people might think it is that we do. I think it's a lot more complex when you're behind, uh, uh, you're in a corporate and then you, someone is telling you, hey, one of the servers are down, um, people can't buy 
um, airtime because of a cyber incident or because of a breach is totally different. You have so many moving parts to that. So it's a lot more complex. So I think it's just we need to, to expose people and not just cyber security. I think even the different um, skills of the future as well. Um, and another important component that I think that we need to start doing is, is actually using some of the different skills like your data analysis and bridging them and, and, and just having that combine and, and, and seeing how we can work together on that, um, your, your governance aspects from your IT in general, whatever skills that we have to fuse together because I think at, at this day and age, um, you need, we need people who are very, very um, diverse maybe in their skills. So it's just not enough to have a degree and say you'll get the job. Um, everybody has the degree, um, but how are you bringing whatever and, 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 and just fusing together the, the right sets of skills, of skills? Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. I think it's coming back uh, from both of you around we need to have a combination of skill sets to be able to uh, you know, uh, understand cybersecurity and the different threats that it comes uh, that it comes with. So, I guess my advice to young people out there would be to stay close to big companies like Standard Bank that are future ready and find out what the future skills that you need are. You know, and then go out there and equip yourself. And then for corporates out there, look, let's go out and let's have conversations with the institutions of not only higher learning but even primary school. You know, high school. Let's go in. Let's expose young people. Uh, on you know what we do and what what are the skills of the future because because of what the outlook in our different businesses you know is and let's 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 be very intentional about it let's be conscious about it uh, in in make in making the future generation ready for the future um, thank you very much gentlemen you know I think as we continue speaking there's lots of questions coming up from our viewers around data protection um, right now um, especially on the financial space they're asking the regulator what are you doing. They are asking MTN around um, solutions like mobile money and uh, what are you doing in terms of security around that, uh, especially around the festive season. Uh, so I know that we'll take some time and go into the comments section of all of our platforms and try and answer all of these questions because, you know, uh, as it stands right now, we are almost at the tail end um, of our conversation. I'd love, I'd love for our guests, you know, and, and, and our SMEs here to, to really just delve deep on some of the words of advice for people and don't hold back, you know. We're going into the festive season now and Tipo, you were saying earlier, um, cyber security shouldn't just be a focus of the month of November. It should be a focus of every day, you know, in our lives. And we're going into peak season of the year 2022 now. We have an act that has been put in in 2022 and so much work that is happening in as far as strengthening our systems. But what are the key takeaways that you want us to, to take home, you, you know, this evening? Uh, and, and please, like I said, don't hold back. Like, give us, give us, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and all of the people that are watching this show this evening, we want them to go back and, and, and think, I just went into a master class, you know, on cybersecurity this evening, you know, uh, from a personal level, from a work perspective, from a business perspective, and you know, I'm going to start with Deepo. Um, thanks, 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 Pila. We will, okay, I will speak to people, but yeah. let me start with, with organizations. Okay. Um, m most business leaders will agree that their future is in partnerships. And the partnerships are not just physical partnerships. It's partnerships where, where, where we, 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 we partner digitally through, should I say, APIs. Um, let, 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 let me give you a, 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 a quick scenario. Um, this time last year, if I'm not mistaken, when you had to, 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 to pay your water bill, using um, the standard bank platforms. You paid and then waited for a day or two before that, that, that transactions can be confirmed and, uh, at water services level. But right now, you actually, before you pay, you actually confirm the bill um, or the amount that you need to pay. Pay and then you receive an SMS from water services that says you've, you've paid and this is your remaining balance. 
that tells you that there is there is an, an integration that is happening between Standard Bank and um, a certain water services corporation. So because of that, what it means is that as Standard Bank, we are as much responsible of our own internal as we are to 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 EWSC and and, and vice versa. And Andy um, Andy Le was talking about each diligence lane before we can engage in organization to organization. So there are two there are two approaches to 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 cyber security by organizations. Um, exclude yourself so that you, you, you are safe from everyone else. But unfortunately, you are limiting your growth and you won't grow. And um, X number of years down the line, you will not be existing. Or accept that this is, this is the future, but you have to do something on your side as much as everyone else have to do something on your side. It's go, it goes back again to the collaboration. It goes back again to the secure practices um, of running our organizations as well as developing and, and, and partnerships and that. At the end of the day, all of us doing business, there is some aspect of customer data that we have. If I go to a, to a retail shop, of course, my interaction with, 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 with that is card belongs, belongs to the bank, but because there is an exchange of value information that they would retain. Of course, it's, it's information that just appropriate for them to confirm that value. But they are holding on to that piece of information, and that piece of information on their side should not be lost. We have that responsibility because exposure of that piece of information may impact the customer e account with, 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 with his or her bank. So that is at, an, at, a, at a corporate or organizational level. And I know, Gutsi, as, as, as young people, um, it, there is a lot of um, activity that is happening to try and establish businesses and entities and that, that is what they should think and that is where they should think. And for their organizations to survive, investment has to be made in, into those um, um, integrations and platforms. There is a program that is being run by Bible Andil, a good developer, Emma, you develop um, potential um, solutions that will attach to 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 mobile man, which is a that is where we are going, and it is now beginning to unlock that potential of 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 the youth. But at an individual level, again, I have as much responsibility as the organisation I give information to. What is my my responsibility to me and my family um, with, with, with my with my online presence? What information do I give out? How, how many of us are going to show pictures of our um, new ki kids going to their new schools, um, taking them bundle of joy, and giving out all of that information? Usa St. Mark's, Sisuwe Zuluini, Usa St. Mark's, Upumanga Tu, Sengi Mlanzile, Sengi Buyele, Asiseke Zuluini, Seska Manzini, next week's Sessions. How much of that information do we give out? Because look at it from a cyber point of view, but also look at it from a physical security point of view. I've told you, I am going, I'm checking in a AOR, I'm going to London. I'll be gone for two weeks. It actually says there is no one in my, in my physical base. Try to limit as much as possible information that you release on social media about a lot of personal personal information. Let us share jokes, let us greet each other because that is where we meet. Let us share opportunities if there are opportunities, but as much as we possibly can, there is a lot of information that we need we need we need to keep and, and, and hold. Noctula was talking about two FA and that. Without abusing the platform. In September I took a very uncomfortable space coming this side of the year. I started doing Emma short videos. Um, trying to 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 demo and, and and talk about meta cyber security, which which I post on TikTok. One part of the things that I've done in from a demo point of view is to demonstrate how to enable two FA, go Twitter, go go your TikTok, go Facebook, um, go Gmail, and that because I mean it is one step that does a lot of significant work to try and protect you. There are a lot of Facebook 
Instagram accounts that are being stolen. The story it is a real story and there are so many people that have done the thing and their accounts are stolen. They are not in charge of those accounts. You had said I should not hold anything back. Man <laughs> Barao, <laughs> take it literally. Thank you. Thank you very much, Deepo. Noctula, very quickly to wrap up and then Andil. Um, from me, um, as a regulator, there is so much that we're doing. And Gutabane um, Cyber Security Emergency Response Team Unit, which um, will help the country coordinate my incidents of cyber security. For an example, Nangabe Wendegile. Washaiwa Standard Bank. So that we can report against okay, it's in We were not going to obviously release that information. Um, but at the same time, it informs us of what's okay. Singe maswati. What are we basically facing as challenges in um, in the cyberspace? And then there's something that I wanted to add um, when you were talking about my careers in um, cybersecurity. Excuse me. So uh, my career as in cybersecurity, it's, it's quite interesting now. Um, the world has kind of changed. Um, it's not me, the technical person, anymore. Gunabo um, cyber law, for an example. So you can still divert and go into that. Ukonaga marketing. Um, I don't know if you're in marketing, you can go into cybersecurity awareness, for an example, because that's your strength. You just need to know a couple of tech, um, technical terms or controls or whatever, I got cybersecurity, and then you can fly. I'm giving you ideas. So there is so much that young people can do. Um, I need to have done IT, I need to have had EPSC. I think I ended uh, six or seven modules in one year. So it was torture. So it discourages people from actually venturing into that space. And I'm here and I'm encouraging everyone. It is possible. It doesn't matter what's the when they're in the cyber security. So long as you know you can yeah, you can talk you can you can go into that space. So I'm just encouraging people to just explore. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for that. The young people who can talk, you've been encouraged. <laughs> Andile. All right, um, I think briefly, um, Deepo said a lot of what, I, of, of what I wanted to say. But maybe the, the one key thing that we always say is that security is everybody's responsibility. And I just want to maybe unpack that a little bit in my understanding. Um, I think as a customer, Yamomo, for instance, when we, when we say security is your responsibility, I think you have a right. As, as the customer to, to, to come to MTN and actually warn MTN of a potential um, exposure, for instance, that you've noticed within the app. I think that's how I interpret security is your responsibility. Because if we are breached as MTN, um, what if it's your wallet that they'll just take? What if you're a big business, you've got loads of money in that wallet? Um, uh, so, so I just want to encourage people to, to actually start thinking about these things security related and wherever we are. Um, I, I think when we, when we had um, started the political unrest, at some point on the roads they were taking our ID numbers and whatnot. And, and, and those are the things you need to start thinking about. Where's my, where's my data going? Uh, you know, why, why do you want this data? Why do you want this? Why do you want that? Um, how, how are you protecting that? I think these are, um, are questions uh, as customers that we should be asking and we should really get to the bottom of it, not just divulge information that might come and bite us at the, at the end. So I, I just want to say, I, let's, I think the cyber hygiene and, cy and responsibility is, is everybody's and we have to start now. Absolutely. Um, Deepo, Noctula and Andile, thank you very much. I think we've proven tonight that really time flies when you're having fun. We cannot exhaust the subject of cybersecurity and its awareness in just one hour, but I, I th think we've been encouraged, we've been challenged, and now we will think about it even more. So I, ho I hope we can engage with, with some, of, some of our SMEs on social media and get more information, research, and get more information on cybersecurity. But it has been the sixth edition of the Blue Table Talks brought to you by Standard Bank, Eswatini. And we have spoken about all things cybersecurity, and hopefully the awareness has been raised. My name is Pilar Lamini. My friends call me PhD, and it's been an absolutely amazing evening with you. Have a fantastic evening, and thank you for tuning in.